All right, so we're going to be looking at the Mixing Station app. So first thing we're going to do, make sure that you are selected on the router that is hooked up to your console. And now that you have that, you can go to your Mix Station app. And if you haven't purchased it yet, over on the side it's going to have the option for you to connect. So uh, it would actually say Connect to Purchase and then you would do that. So we're going to make sure we have 192.168.1.118 and up on our screen that's the same thing we have in DHCP. So I'll hit connect. And just to show you we are connected here, I can actually move things on my phone. So the reason I'm doing this on my phone is to keep the resolution correct on the uh, video for you guys. I'd love to be able to use the iPad because it would be easier to show you things, but you should be able to do almost everything from the phone here, which is nice. So the first thing that's going to pull up here is going to be all of your channels. So you can see we have kick, channel 2, snare, blah, blah, blah. So if I click on the word kick, it's going to bring up the overview of the entire channel, which is super nice. So at any point in time, if you want to actually change the name, we're going to go back to this view. And then you see the three little tiny dots at the top right. We're going to push that. And then you hit scribble strip. And then when you hit scribble strip, I'm going to be changing, and you can see on this other camera, I'm going to be changing the colors of our scribble strips here. I'll end up changing them back to red. And then we have kick, then we have, we're going to put snare on channel two. We'll put hat for channel three. And you can just label things however you want to. Won't go any more into that. And then over on the far right, you can see the far right top. You can see the little buttons. That's for our mute groups, an easy way to get to it from here. We'll go into that in a second. So I haven't really got to spend much time looking at this app, but it looks great. I've spent about three minutes before I turn it on to make this video. So we'll go back to our channel overview. We're gonna start all the way on the left for config. When you hit config, you can do your routing. So we have our main source and our alternate source. So you can see up on the camera, whenever I hit alternate source, it's gonna kill my microphone and it's gonna go to the alternate source, which is the card. So I can go back to main and now we're back. And then if I'm on main, I can go to anything I wanna to route to that channel. So honestly, in my opinion, I think this is easier than what's on the console. So if I wanted to go to AES 50B, we have eight inputs we can choose from, so I could hit that. I'm gonna go ahead and route this back to our AES-50A, and my mic is on A17. So if you're wondering why you don't see anything, it's because if you don't have anything hooked up to AES-50A, you're not gonna be able to see it. We have a DL-154 and a 151 for these videos that are hooked up. While you're also here, you can see at the bottom, it's gonna show what DCA group and what mute group it's assigned to. So this is another way that you can do that. Then insert is gonna be if we've inserted any effects onto this channel. So I do have, uh, I'm trying to think what channel it is. I believe it's going to be one of our vocals. So I can take a look just to show you guys. I believe it's going to be channel 29. So channel 29 there, we're going to select on it. That way you can see I do have something inserted here. It's a uh, effects unit that we have inserted and I have nothing inserted on the second slot. So you can get to your inserts, which is also really great. Show you what else we have here. So. Uh, back on this, we have after our insert is going to be our gate. You can either hit gate at the very top or you can just simply click on the gate and it's going to bring it up. I thought this was neat because it has a waveform that you can actually see me talking and I'll quit for a second. And you saw the gate take over, which is really nice. So pretty cool and you can just take your finger and drag for the threshold. Uh, then you also have up on the top what you're used to seeing now, which is going to be like up on the screen, if we had that selected. It's going to be the same thing as our envelope, which is pretty nice. So we have our envelope over on the right side. This doesn't have the envelope, but it has the controls for it, which is pretty nice. So then back to our overview, you can click directly on the EQ. And then this EQ, is one of the SSL 
you can change that to whatever you need to. I'm going to hit the top arrow, top right, to switch over to channel 2. And then you can see I have a parametric, and I can change that to anything. So if I want to do that SSL, I could put it on that, whatever type of EQ you want. And Dave did such a good job on putting all these graphics where you know which one you're on. So just always keep in mind, like I'm going to make a, an adjustment. Whenever I go back to that type of EQ, it does clear it out. So if you have an EQ setting you really like, I wouldn't make much of an adjustment on it. And then we're going to go back into the compressor now. So the compressor here, you can kind of see that I'm talking. I'm going to go ahead and move the threshold so we can bring it way down. Uh, you can turn it on or off here, or you can select the different types of compressors. So you can see I'm being compressed, and then you can also change the ratio, which is really nice. And then you have further controls over here, the knee, the gain, the mix. We can do a little makeup gain. And if you take auto off, it's going to add even more parameters you can change for the attack, hold, and release up at the top. And at any time when you're in any of these, you can still change the uh, fader, which is really nice as well. So now we'll go back to our... This is pretty cool. So in our overview, you can go directly to monitor mixes. So we're going to go ahead and click on this monitor mix here, and this brings up all the monitor mixes. So you have 1 through 8, and then you have 9 through 16 as well. So we'll go ahead and go up and down, whatever we need to, to shoot this into the monitor mixes, which is really nice. A little bit uh, larger, I guess you could say, on the iPad screen, but still very operable, which is really nice here. And then you have the main output as well. So this is going to be, for me, left, right, sub, I have the front fills. So pretty cool. I actually really like that. And then you can scroll down here if you want to see the other mixes. And I have this turned on, which you can turn on and off on your parameters. I have it to where it flashes with Sends on Fader, which is really nice. So whenever you click this, we're on Sends on Fader. So now if I wanted to put this in Mix 2, this is no longer selecting and messing with front of house. It's what's going to those mixes. Once you're off of it, now we're back to where we can change whatever for front of house. So you have all the buses, all 16, and the, the matrices that you can fool with. Over here is where you can get through all of your different inputs and where you can get to the masters for your auxes, your buses, and mains. Everything is selectable here, which is really nice. So now we get to do all of our menu options that are up at the top here. So I'm going to go back to here. We're going to start out with what is basically our metering page. So you can see all the uh, input and output for the entire console, which is extremely cool. The next one we're going to go to, we looked at it earlier, is going to be for the mute groups. So on the mute groups, if you actually tap and hold the mute group, it brings you into another menu to where you can add or subtract channels from the mute group. So we're going to say that we're going to have channel 1, channel 11, and 5, 6, 7, and 8. So once you've done that, now when I hit mute group 1 up here, and you can look on the console. Oops, my finger missed it. Hmm. It works on the iPad app. I'm trying to see why it is not working here. And you can name it here too, which would be well. But not really quite sure. And it's locked up there. So that's something I did notice on my phone. It does lock up occasionally but it didn't lock up at all on my iPad. So we're going to log back in here and see if we have mute group control now. We do. Yay. So you can see as I hit it, everything is muting. I was about to say that's the way this should be. And it is muting, unmuting. And if you hit anywhere above it, you go back off. So pretty cool on being able to assign mute groups very quickly. Your effects rack, this is going to have all 16 of your effects racks, which is really nice. So easy to get to for that. And then you can select whatever you need to for the effects rack. So let me go back out. Ha, I just killed one of my effects. 
That's why I wish I could use the iPad for the resolution. But you can select what you need to have here for that. And it just does not light my finger. And you can actually assign for your verbs. So then we will go to our routing, which is going to be the two arrows, one up, one down. So on our sources, I uh, kind of showed you it's very easy to do your sources just directly from over here. So I'll hit kick, configure, and you can route your sources there. But we'll go ahead and go back here, and we'll do it this way. So on this, you can see I'm going to go ahead and go to my signal source, and we're going to take a look at our AES 50A, what we have to offer, and we have 24 channels that are hooked up to this. You can go ahead and select the gain. The problem is the way that it does it here is it's for whatever channel you have selected. So you could do it this way. I just think it's a lot faster for inputs going the other way. Now outputs is a different story. So now we're on outputs. We have local. Uh, you can do any of the outputs that you have here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our AES 50B because we have quite a few outputs routed to that. So let's say instead of 15 being my main left, that I would like for it to be my bus 4. So it's that easy. You just go ahead and select it. Really excited about the way he set all this up. It's, uh, it's just set up great. So we'll go back to our main and we'll do our main left. So any output you can do from the output routing. And then the settings, this is where he just spent so much time and it's just incredible. So on the app itself, when you go into here, you have the orientation lock on the screen, the auto save, MIDI support, the theme. He has a bunch of different color options for it. Uh, double tap on off. Then when you get to mixers, uh, you can see that there's a lot of other stuff as well. So on the mixer setup, we have the parametric EQ, the sensitivity, the click, the double click, all of this is going to be how much sensitivity of your finger is just really nice. Uh, meter bridge, you can turn it on, the peak hold, RTA averaging, this is all just so great. Ooh, pop groups, that's something I really want to see that happen. Hmm. I'll have to look into that because maybe you can hit a DCA and it populates it. And then our fine fader. The, a few of these are actually things that are already available on the front that we'll look at in a minute. You can load or save settings, which is really nice. And then I guess you could send them. Yep, that's cool. So we'll get back out of here. Oops. I don't think we went to channel strip yet. So on our channel strip, same thing with our sensitivity gate threshold. God, you can get so detailed in this. This is pretty cool. And then our layers. Uh, let's see if we can figure this out. So this is going to be all of your channels. So we're going to go ahead and... Oh, that's cool. Visible channels per layer. You could have a bunch. God, you could have all the way up to 32. It's pretty nice. Having eight gives you a lot more control. So let's go ahead and let's just try 18 for a while and just see if it'll actually let us do that. Yeah, you can have 18 viewed at a time. So where this is going to come in handy is if you make a custom uh, layer with your finger, you'd have to get exact. So I don't know if I'd recommend doing that. So we're going to go ahead and make that be eight again. Alright, so in here though, in our layers, we're going to add a layer. So we'll go ahead and hit add, and we'll call it pop. Don't know why, but we're going to. So let's add some channels in here. Let's add kick, snare, hat. This was a tom. <laughs> so we're going to add all of our percussion to it. So there we go. So now that's got all of that there. And then we can go ahead and get out of here. And now down at the bottom, if this works right, yep, there it is. Pop. And when you hit it, that's going to be whatever channels you want it to be. So you could have it towards drums, then make your next one be strings. You can make this just be very user defined how you want it to be, which is so cool. So that's our layouts. Uh, layout's a little bit different. If this works like most things, yep, you can make this however you want to. 
So I'm going to put this here. Let's say I want this to be over here this time. And I want these to be over here. And then I'm going to add a meter bridge if it'll let me. Yeah, look at that. Add a meter bridge. Drag it up a little bit where you can see it. And then we'll go ahead and go out. And lo and behold, look at that. Now I have my own customized meter bridge on the top, everything you need, and you can still get to whatever you need to as well, which is just crazy. So if you get in there and you mess that up, let's see if he gave you a way out. He did, default. So we're gonna hit default load, and now we're back to where we were. So awesome, you were the man, David. Then we have MIDI, uh, and MIDI we can cover in a different video. Gosh, it's just crazy. And then on our app setting, a few things that I did want to show you that I think is going to be under Mixer is our sends on fader. You could actually have those turned off or on. So I turn them on that way, like I showed you earlier. If I get in one, it's kind of like warning, warning. You are in mix on fader and screwing up somebody's monitor. And it also lets you know that <coughs> you're in front of house. <coughs> so pretty cool app. I have no complaints at all about it. I know we're still kind of beta testing mode for all this stuff, but he's the man. Please support him and buy whatever you can to get everything, get him a little bit of money going on. Uh, DCAs, I really do wonder if that does a spill group. Oh, there's something cool I just discovered. So if you're on your DCAs and you click on it, you can add whatever you want to be on that DCA. Such a quick way to do it. Yeah, I think I'm going to be using this app for a lot more than I actually use the screen on the mixer. So that's really cool. And you can do your uh, monitors, have a monitor engineer basically on stage. That's so cool. Let's see, I guess, if you could, if you're on mains, if you can send this to matrices. It doesn't have that, but you hit sends, and then this will send to the matrices. So that's pretty cool. So overall, extremely impressed. Oh yeah, and this other thing I guess I can show you. If you hit fine, it makes it to where you really have to, like my finger, I'm moving a lot and we're gonna go to inputs one through eight where you can see it. I'm going all the way up and down this thing. And then if we got fine and got rid of it, it's immediate. So fine allows you to make very fine tunes on it. So mute enabled, that makes it to where you can actually mute the channels. If you were to take the mute off, you can't accidentally mute the channels, which is nice. So if you guys need any gear, just give us a call. It's 256-275-4734. Please hit like and subscribe, and uh, we'll try to keep you up to date as much as we can in between shows and installs. But have a great day.